Okay, and here are the short answer questions for test one in pre-cal 40. All right, uh, oops, I'm gonna zoom out here on the page. Uh, start of the short answer here. Uh, reflection in the line y equals x is known as the inverse of a function. Okay, uh, that's just a standard thing that you should have had memorized uh, in preparation for this test. Uh, question two, if g of x is one over x plus five, write the equation that translates g of x two units down. And in fact, here is the full answer. And I've just highlighted that the, it's the minus two at the end of uh, the function that, that matters. By the way, uh, just because uh, I'm a nice guy, I'm also gonna accept y equals g of x minus two, okay? Uh, but that g of x is really just this part here of the answer. Okay, uh, next part, number three. Uh, write the equation of the inverse that gives f of x uh, equals x plus 9. Um, well, f inverse then, the, the inverse of adding 9 is subtracting 9. That's one way of thinking of it, and that's how you get the answer. Another way of thinking about it is that for the inverse, uh, you replace the x with y and the y with x. And so you have x equals y plus 9 by taking the inverse of f. And, well, isolating y, you end up with y equals x minus 9. Okay, next question here. Uh, given the graph of y equals f of x below, list one invariant point in the, of the transformation. y equals negative half f of x. Uh, there's actually two possible answers. Uh, negative 1, 0 over here. And this other x-intercept that I've circled over here, uh, approximately negative 3.5, comma, 0. Okay, so there, there is a second answer. Okay. Now, why are these answers both correct? Uh, well, the, this point is invariant uh, because it is an x-intercept. And the transformation taking place is only affecting the y values. So if you took a y value and multiplied it by negative a half, if it, you started with a y equals 0, this would have no impact at all. Okay, and here's the next page. Uh, question five, if eight and minus eight, nine is a point on the transformed graph, careful that on the graph of f of x plus four, what must be a point on y equals f of x? In other words, eight, ne negative eight comma nine is transformed. It's the result of a transformation. So negative eight comma nine is the result of adding four to the y value. So the original y value is, neg is positive five and the x value remains unchanged at negative eight. Okay, next question. Uh, the graph of y equals f of x is given below. Right, you know, without graphing the inverse, determine whether or not it's a function, explain the reasoning. Uh, the answer is not a function. And the reasoning is right here in this line that I drew, which is called a horizontal line. And you see that the horizontal line intersects two different times. And so we can conclude, therefore, that uh, this fails what's called the horizontal line test. So in your explanation, you need to use the word horizontal line test uh, somewhere to explain that that's why it's not a function. Question seven, uh, this one is very straightforward. Uh, the function y equals f of x has this domain and this range, identify the domain of the inverse. Well, for the inverse function, the range is the domain and the domain is the range of the original function. So, you know, the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. So, if the domain, sorry, if the range of f of x is negative three, five, then the domain of y equals f inverse of x would be that same thing. Okay, for number eight, the range of the function is given here. Determine the range of this transformed version of the function. Well, I should just kind of ask myself what's happening in general to all the points. Any x, y is becoming uh, x minus one, y minus three, okay? 
So just thinking about the range, the range is all the y values. So we just need to concentrate on what's happening to the y values. They're going down 3. So all the y values will go down 3, including this negative 2 and this 7. And so that gives us the answer. Down 3 gives us negative 5 and 4. Okay, now for, finally for question 9 on this page, uh, there's many good explanations that could, could uh, be given for this one. Um, just to give you one good example uh, is that the x-intercept is invariant uh, when you are applying a vertical stretch and a vertical reflection. In fact, that's what we're applying here is vertical stretch and reflection. There are al alternative ways of explaining this, and so uh, a lot of different answers could be accepted. Why don't you ask me about uh, yours in particular if you have any questions there. Okay, on the last page here. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few questions. So 10, determine an equation for the reflection of the function over the y-axis. Okay, so over the y-axis is important here. Over the y-axis is a horizontal reflection. Uh, it's of the form y equals f of negative x. So we must replace x with negative x. Uh, we could do that explicitly here, the one I'm circling. Or, uh, if you multiply out that negative x cubed, you would end up with y equals negative 3 x cubed minus 1. Okay, uh, next, restrict the domain. Uh, there are infinitely many correct answers here. Uh, here are the two most common. Uh, if I restrict the domain to only including everything to the right of that line I just drew, I get this, and everything to the left of the line is that. Um, that's a restricted domain, and, and uh, that half of the function will pass the horizontal line test. As I said, there are other restrictions that are more restrictive, which will also be correct. All right, question 12. This one's not obvious. Uh, we're asking, when is the horizontal translation uh, in this graph? Well, it looks like it's 9 to the right because of that minus 9. But in fact, we have to recall that you must factor out the 3, or the coefficient of x, and you end up with this. Okay, And there, this gives us the answer that, in fact, it's going to be 3 units to the right. Okay, finally, number 13. Uh, on this PDF, for some reason, there's no graph that appears anymore, but you see it on your page, hopefully. And all I did in order to graph the correct answer was map that any xy in f of x becomes yx in f inverse of x. Okay, hope that helps.